All right. How's everybody doing out there? Hopefully well. 4 p.m. here. Wow. I had to put this one comment up. I like your comment. I told my friend the other day I will never catch COVID. He said, really? I said, yes, I don't have a TV in my house. <laughs> That's pretty good. I uh, thought that was pretty funny. Uh, doing pretty good. So just, just a real quick little video here. Um, just some different announcements for everybody. This will be uh, oh, you're in New Brunswick. Oh, praise the Lord. Maybe. You have to forgive me. I, I know a lot of your names, but it gets jumbled up here in my head. Um, you know, this brother and that one and this one and, and you know, where are they at? I, so, but yeah, Nate. Um, so, have never been over to New Brunswick. I haven't really tried to cross the border into Canada. It's not far from where we're at, especially in Bridgewater. Bridgewater, the one entrance into Canada is like three miles away from our old place in Bridgewater. So, uh, yeah, but anyhow, I'm going to get into some of these announcements real quickly here. Um, there's some different updates. If you don't catch the live stream, you can watch this. Um, update number one, I mentioned this on Sunday's live stream. Um, the vehicle with this, or the vehicle with this issue. Yeah. The issue with the vehicle um, thing where we bought a vehicle on eBay and then the eBay user deleted their um, profile and whatever else. And I'm checking out some articles and people are saying this guy's a scammer. Don't buy from him. And I'm thinking, oh, no, uh, we could lose a substantial amount of money. Which money doesn't come real easy, uh, you know, and whatever. But uh, um, ask everybody to pray. Well, everybody's prayers. Uh, the Lord has answered. The guy put up his eBay page again with a new name so it's the same seller rating the same everything um, and uh, got a call from the shipping company and the guy said picked up the Jeep everything's fine it's a Jeep Cherokee an older one of 2001 so um, I don't really like new vehicles very much <laughs> the really old stuff that's really neat and, and everything else the real old vintage like 1970s and earlier that stuff was a lot of times it's really overpriced and whatever else. So we try to stay in you know the 1990s or the early 2000s with our vehicles, cheaper that way. But um, the shipper called, said, "Loaded up the Jeep, we're heading your way." And I just got an email from him here a little bit ago, saying that uh, I think he's in Wyoming right now, and they should be at our place um, in like a week or two. So it's going to take a little while because it's coming from Portland, Oregon to Northern Maine. So, and you say, why didn't you just buy a, a vehicle in, in Maine? Well, because the vehicles here are destroyed by rust. Um, our truck, uh, literally, um, it only has just, I think it just tipped over 100,000 miles on the truck. And it's not even inspectable anymore because the rust from the salt on the roads and everything they put here. Um, it's not just salt, it's other chemicals, snow melt type of stuff. And it's so badly rusted underneath that it's not even safe to drive anymore. So it, that tells you how bad it is. So I, I met a guy years ago from up here and he told me, um, he said, if you want a decent vehicle that's going to last you for a while, um, don't buy it from Maine. Okay. Unless it was brought here from another state. Uh, you have to buy vehicles from out of state or else you're just going to be dealing with a rust bucket in, in a few years. I mean, the, the truck that we bought that it's not inspectable anymore. It's literally, we've only had it for, I think, two, two, maybe three years that we bought it. And it had body work done before we bought it. I mean, bad. So thank you to everybody out there for your prayers on the, the vehicle issue. Um, really need to answer the prayer. Um, I am hoping when it shows up that everything's fine and it's accurate to the ad and everything else. So it was just kind of bothering me because there was no way I could, you know, have any kind of recourse of action against the seller if it was a ripoff. You know, if it's a 
bad situation, but now I do. So really happy about that. Um, another thing uh, we've been having uh, to do, I had to do some work on um, our old ambulance that we had bought years ago. Uh, I had it sitting because it had some brake issues and things. And so I um, was able to find a garage that could work on it because the problem is with that big thing, it weighs over 10,000 pounds and most garages don't have a, a lift that can pick it up. So you have to find one that has a real heavy duty lift. And I found one in the area. It's not real far from here, just a couple miles to the south of us. So I have an appointment. I'm supposed to drop it off on Sunday and then they're going to work on it on Monday, get it inspected. When that's inspected, then I can start moving in my books. So I'm really looking forward to that because I got this blank wall right here, right there. Um, and it needs to have my bookshelves. I miss my books, you know, being right here where I can use them. They're, you know, available at our property where we live. Um, but, you know, it's, it's not the same thing as when I'm here and somebody asks me a question um, in correspondence back and forth and I can just grab a book and that's the one I need. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, so we have our big ambulance thing. I had to get a new tire for the front because it was getting pretty bald. And um, so I took that off, took it around to different places. It's a special type of tire because it's a commercial vehicle meaning a really big heavy duty vehicle so you have to get a 10 ply tire sorry for all the details here but people pray so i'm just updating you out there so um so we got that done so praise lord for that and then we also have stuff up at our place in bridgewater that a few things that need to be taken out of there and i don't have a truck anymore so i need the big ambulance to be able to haul that stuff out of there because um, it can fit 16 feet lengths inside of the ambulance uh regular trucks eight foot bed so you know we can really haul a lot of good stuff out of there um again some more of the ministry type of things if you've seen the one video i did where i had that chalk talk board that i built you know in a video um that needs to be hauled out of there i had a big computer desk that i made um the heavy duty computer desk where i was able to set up my computer and printer and whatever else i needed uh, I have to get that down here. Um, this I have this little. If you see me, I, I hit this table and you see it. See how the camera's shaking? <laughs> it's a plastic little plastic folding leg table that I have my computer and monitors on and everything for doing my work. So um, that's where we're at with the that whole thing too. People are praying about that. Um, as far as work is being done here on this new office, um, there are there's a lot of stuff that was left here. You saw the house tour you probably got to see that down in the basement especially there was a bunch of junk down there a bunch of wood um you know that uh they were using this this place originally had a wood stove in the basement that would heat the hot water which would have been free heat which would have been pretty nice um but the old wood stove it's warped and it's really badly rusted and whatever else and they put a whole new oil furnace system in which i'm not real i'm not really into that but uh, that's another issue. But uh, they had a whole bunch of firewood down in the basement. So that was a blessing because we were able to take the firewood over to our property and cut it up and split it up. And then we were, you know, we use it for uh, cooking our food. So um, we heat and or we, uh, we make our food with, with wood, burning wood year round. So um, just answer this one here. Um, what are you doing at the with the garage, brother? Well, what we're doing is we are going to try to have it down by winter time. Um, not sure yet how we're going to do that because I am not about to, uh, not going to get up inside the place. The floors are just too badly rotted. I'm scared to death to even get up in there. There's no way. It's not worth it. Um, to fall down through the wooden floor and whatever else. I don't really want to do that. So I don't know if I can try to start tearing stuff off on the outside and eventually tear the place down. Um, one of my neighbors up here, he's a construction guy and he's probably going to be doing the, we need a one roof replaced just over the sun porch out here because it's in bad shape. And I was saying something to him about, do you know anybody that can, um, that has like a big excavator or something that could help just knock the garage over 
and then we'll try to, you know, I'll get the scrap out of there and whatever else. Um, so nothing real de definite yet, but we have other things to do. So um, that's basically it for that. Uh, we are trying to organize some other things here and there. Uh, one of the big blessings that has happened is we do have solar powered refrigeration on our property, but they're dinky little tiny refrigerators. So that makes it kind of challenging. Um, we've learned to adapt to it and whatever, but now that we have this place just not far from our property, we're able to actually have, you know, regular food storage. Um, we have a chest freezer up at Bridgewater, small little one that we would put our apples that we pick from our property, cut them up you know, make applesauce or whatever else, put them in our little chest freezer. So we still have to bring that down, which we need the ambulance for. Um, but it's nice to be able to have a refrigerator here that we can use to store things um, because we have a lot of, you know, berries and other things, apples and stuff that will be coming up here at the end of September, uh, going into October is when the apple harvest is really gets big. So we're able to, to save a lot of money buying. We don't have to buy fruit because we get it from our property, um, which is really neat. Um, so we have, you know, some things to really be thankful for. Everybody out there, just thank you again for your prayers. Um, we just couldn't do it without the body of Christ praying for us. And that, that means a lot. Um, so thank you, everybody out there. Um, uh, let's see here. Um Something I'm praying about, and I've, I've kind of made mention about this, um, when I had the secular channel for a little bit, I was going to do sort of an off-grid seminar type of a thing, you know, and I wrote up, I think it's 10 parts, um, I wrote the notes for it, and, you know, there's just a little bit of it, I'm not going to show it too much, but it's a, a really big, you know, I'm sorry, 12 parts, 12 parts, um, you know, it would be a lot of video recording, a lot of, of um, a lot of information on on what I've learned over the years, studying the off grid movement, going around to different states, seeing it off grid, how people do things off grid. Um, in I've seen off grid stuff in Alaska. I've seen it in Montana, um, northern Pennsylvania. Um, I don't think I've seen any in New York State, like in the Adirondacks. Um, but I've, I've seen it a lot, you know, in some southern states and things. And then also in Honduras and Costa Rica when I was there. Um, and I've studied a lot of different off-grid things. I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a world-renowned expert or anything, but I have learned a lot. And we have tried a lot of things here in northern Maine. And I know a lot of people are interested in the life of off-grid living. And so... I'm, I'm not sure if I should um, if I should bring that out or not. Uh, does that tie in with ministry type of stuff or should I just let that go? So I don't know. Um, uh, you know with with what's coming to this country, it's it might be very important. so that's that's another thing that uh, I'd appreciate anybody's thoughts on that. Um, you can write them in the comments there on the live stream or, comments down below um, should I do an off-grid seminar type of a thing it's gonna be 12 parts in, in length it would be a very very big amount of work and I'm just saying you know would it be worth it I don't know um, and, and you know the other thing is too I do part of what I do um, just I don't do it full-time obviously because I have other work to do but I will go and watch secular videos and specifically for the reason I don't even watch the whole video a lot of times just to get kind of an idea. What are they talking about? And then I'll post comments and kind of witness in the comments and um, just try to wake people up to the truth of what's going on in the world and whatever. And then people I've seen, you know, I'll say stuff like that and they'll come to this channel and realize, oh, this guy's a preacher and they'll start watching videos. And um, so that's been kind of neat. So again, I start doing off-grid stuff that can draw people in and they might get saved with that because um, it, it is it is an important subject so uh, you know see a couple of you over there saying that that'd be nice and everything um, and there's there's ways to do it you know again I, I know people that are in the cities and they're saying you know how in the world would it ever be possible I don't think it could happen 
um, it's actually easier than you'd think. It just requires some sacrifice and whatever. So, um, and you have to understand what it means to be off grid. You know, there's so, there's so much stuff on YouTube that's just so misleading, and these people doing this off grid, you know, stuff. And, you know, it, it just cracks me up. You see these houses, and it looks just like this huge, big home, and they have, you know, 60,000 watts of solar or something. And you, it's not off grid. I mean, technically, it's off grid, but it's the mindset's wrong. You know, you have to understand some things. Um, I did. I see a couple of you saying there. Why did I shut off the uh, shut down the off grid channel? Um, a number of reasons. Some of the brethren were saying, you know, probably not the best idea to be showing too much of your homestead there and, and whatever. Yeah, and it was starting to kind of. I was thinking, okay, if I start monetizing, you know, this channel, and it does start to make really good money, it's going to start to pull me away from the ministry. Because, you know, I, I have, uh, I'm supposed to make a living. And and I do, um, you know, the Lord provides for our needs, but there's nothing wrong with me having secular work. And I can use my talents as an artist, you know, to um, make beautiful videos and things. And, and um, I could, yeah, I could put in a lot of music and text and, and take some really neat, beautiful shots out here in nature in this area of the country it's it's really beautiful here big mountains and everything um beautiful streams waterfalls the whole deal um i could really put out some beautiful work that you know but i don't do that much on this channel um simply because i want people to focus more on preaching the, the word of god you know the king james bible so um so yeah um what's the update uh well uh, Ryan Ski or Ryan Sky 777. Um, just basically, you can go back and watch the whole thing, but the eBay vehicle issue has gotten better. The seller um, had deleted his, we bought a vehicle on eBay. Seller deleted his profile, and I thought, oh no, I got scammed. Well, no, he just redid it. He did his, redid his uh, eBay user account. So thank you to everybody out there for praying for that. Just going over some of our vehicle issues with getting things inspected so we can be able to haul our books down here and set things up. Um, just some of the work that we're doing here. Uh, should I do an off-grid seminar? And finally to the last part of um, uh, this little just short video, ministry update video. Um, and that is this coming Sunday morning. Um, we're going to be doing this for the foreseeable future from 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock. Eastern Standard Time uh, on this channel. Um, we, we do a um, little Sunday morning service, just a, a Bible study that I do live. And um, I encourage people to, to have your King James Bible. King James Bible, follow along in the scriptures. And at the end, um, then we can discuss the, su the subject. So um, this week coming up, Sunday morning, I'm going to be doing a study on returning to the days of Noah is what it's going to be. And, um, you know, it's, it's going to get into the thing of the end time prophecy that Jesus gave in Matthew 24, talking about is in the days of Noah or Noe, if you want to say it the way it's said there in Matthew 24. So too shall be in the days before the coming of the Son of Man. So what does that mean? What does that prophecy mean? And what are we facing in the future? And you know, there's a lot of scriptures that, that can you can read and it can really get you down and you can kind of think, oh, no, this is really going to be bad. And it is going to be bad. But I want to focus more on, OK, here's the bad. Here's how bad it, it's going to get. But here are some positive solutions. OK, that's what the Lord's really been pressing on my heart. Again, this ties in with a lot of the off grid stuff. Um, just kind of. You know, um, what do we do with the economy in, in free fall and, and all this other stuff that's going on, all this election stuff? And, you know, I mean, all the things that we see happening around the world, not just here in America. Um, but, uh, you know, what do we do? And um, so, you know, just to give everybody just a kind of a heads up what we're going to talk about this week coming up. Uh, again, returning to the days of Noah is what the study is going to be called. Um, 
finishing up the notes right now, finishing up the study. Um, you know, it, a lot of this stuff, you know, it's the the sermon ideas. You know, sometimes it's the body of Christ that tells me this stuff. They say, hey, brother, could you do a study on this or on that, whatever? Yeah, that's actually a good idea. I haven't preached on that yet, and I'll do that. Other times, it's it's just kind of a, you know, the Lord starts to reveal things to me, and I see other people start to see it, and I think, hmm, you know, what do I do about this? What do I say? And I start to read the Bible, and the Lord starts to put scriptures in my head. I mean, I've literally had sermons. You know, the Lord will start to place it in my mind in the middle of the night. I mean, just boom, you know, two o'clock in the morning, eyes open up. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Yeah, that'd be good. And, um, yeah, it's, it's ironic because when I've had that happen, it doesn't happen all the time, but the, the times that it has happened, I'll wake up in the middle of the morning and just, or early, early morning. Cause I usually get up at four 30 to five o'clock in there. So, um, but I'll wake up sometimes really early in the morning and I'll just go out and, and I'll write out the sermon notes and I just stay up because I'll work a couple hours doing the sermon notes. And then I just stay up and I think, oh, I'm going to be just, you know, so tired today. And when that happens, it's just the Lord gives me this just supernatural boost of energy and, and I'm fine. You know, it's, it's, it's really amazing. And I love that fellowship when the Lord does that. He said, "Does doesn't always do it, but sometimes he does, and it's it's just so amazing to go through that." And um, you know, and, and as Christians, we have hope. Okay, and you got to remember that, and that's why I don't want to just be some uh, killjoy type of guy. Oh, it's gonna get bad. You know, <laughs> everything's gonna stink in the future. Well, it will. There's gonna be a lot of bad stuff, but there's there's positive ways to get around this and and to get through it. So that's what I want to focus on. Um, so, all right. I'm just look at some of your comments over there. I'm kind of just talking here and I didn't get to see a lot of it. Um, but we'll see everybody Sunday morning. You can tune in 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Um, should be an interesting study. And I'm looking forward to the to this and saying some things about it. I have kind of alluded to a lot of it over the years, but it's just kind of things are really happening. Um, so I want to really put this together and uh. We'll see. So you want to come Sunday morning to this channel. We will be doing the live stream then. And uh, bring your King James Bible. You're going to need that. And um, So, okay. Well, like I said, I'm just doing a quick little you know, live stream here just to kind of update people. Again, you know, don't ever think, oh, well, you know, my prayer, you know, it's who am I? God's not going to listen to me. Um, brethren, I was I was in some pretty kind of, you know, oh, no, <laughs> like just going into some depression just because I thought, oh, man, we just got scammed on this vehicle issue. And I and I just said, could, could you please pray for me on this past Sunday? Within days, there was answers to the prayer. Um so thank you to everybody out there. Don't don't ever think that your prayers don't mean anything, because they do, and God is answering. He answers prayer. So, okay. Uh, answer a few questions here. Have you heard of the PizzaGate child sex trafficking thing? Yes, I have. The Out of Shadows, I think the documentary thing. I heard it about it from there. Um, so, brother, do you plan on completely quitting YouTube? Well, um, I think that they're going to eventually, um, you know, probably kick me off of here or whatever. I don't know. Right now, it's just, I'm awaiting orders from the Lord. 
I was literally praying about that this morning and, and just to just uh, I'm I'm too dumb to quit. You know, I mean, there's there's guys who would quit and just said, you know, whatever, just walk away. I'm going to do something else. I just I'm too hard headed. I'm too stubborn. You know, just people attack me and call me names and do all kind. Of, and I just it kind of encourages me. So I'm not going to quit. I don't have any plans to quit YouTube. As in, when I get this next video done, that's it. I'm finished. YouTube could kick me off or whatever, and I'm just saying, you know what, Lord, if you want me off YouTube, then you you have to do it. I'm not going to push the delete button. You do it, Lord. That's it. Um, I am ending the video. Okay, I've been talking for what 25 minutes, so yes, I'm ending the video. Um, so, um, yeah, you can, I saw, um, Ada, I think it was, or it was, yeah, uh, well, I'll just show your comment, sister. Uh, will you do prayer, prayer requests on Sunday? I have a couple if that's okay. Yes, I will be doing prayer requests. Again, if you haven't, you know, watched one of these, you know, live stream things on Sunday morning, we start out with prayer requests and then we get into the study. So yes, I will be doing prayer requests on, uh, Sunday morning. So, um, okay. We'll see everybody Sunday morning. I'm going to just quit now. Um, so, uh, we'll see everybody on Sunday morning. Like I said, bring your prayer requests. Um, if you have any thoughts, any scriptures that you're thinking might tie into the study of returning to the days of Noah. Jesus Christ prophesied that before his coming, it would be like the days of Noah. So if you have any thoughts or any scriptures that you'd like to look up to add to the study as we get through it, get to the end and discuss it, that'd be great. Um, so see everybody Sunday morning and uh, stand by the word. Pray for us. I'll pray for a lot of you. You've seen some of your requests over there. And let's just hold up each other. So see you Sunday.